When shall we three meet again? Thunder, lightning, or in rain, when the hurly bird is done, when the battle is lost and won. That will be ere the set of sun, where the place upon the heath, there to meet with Macbeth. Oh, I got Brave Elgin! Panic calls. Anon. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. What bloody man is that? He can't report a see why he's played for both the new state. This is a sergeant. Who like a good and hearty soldier fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend. Say to the king the knowledge of the royals thou didst lead it. Doubtful it stood. His two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke in their art. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel, for to that the multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him from the western isles of currents and gallow blasts is supplied. And fortune, on his damned and quarrel smiling, showed like a rebel's whore. But all too weak, for brave Macbeth, well he deserves that name, disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, which smoked with bloody execution, like valor's minion carved out his passage, till he faced his slave, which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him, till he unseen him from the nave to the chaps, and fixed his head upon our backs. Valiant cousin, worthy gentleman, as whence the sun gains his reflection, shipwrecking storms to die from thunder's break. Mark, King of Scotland, mark. No sooner justice had with valor arm compelled these skipping currents to trust their heels, but the Norwegian lord, with furbished arms and new supplies of men, began fresh assaults. This may not this our captain, to Bethlehem Bakewell? Yes, as sparrows, eagles, or the hare, the liar. <laughs> <laughs> if I say sooth, I must report they were as cannons, overcharged with double cracks, <coughs> so they doubled and redoubled strokes upon the foe. Except they meant to bathe in reeking wounds, or memorize another Golgotha. I cannot tell. I am faint, I catch his cry for help. So while thy words become thee as thy wounds, they smack upon a boat. Go get insurgents. Who comes here? The worthy Thane of Ross. What a haste looks through his eyes, so should he look that seems to speak things strange. God save the king. Whence comest thou, worthy Thane? From Fife, great king, where the Norwegian banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict, point against point rebellious, arm against arm, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Oh, great happiness! That now Sweeno, the Norway's king, craves composition. Nor would we deign to bury on his men till we dispersed at St. Holmes' Edge ten thousand dollars to our general use. No more shall that Thane of Cawdor deceive our bosom interest. Go pronounce his present death, and with his former title, be Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, no more Macbeth hath won. Weary seven. 
seven nights, nine times nine, shall he dwindle, peak, and pine. And though the spark can't be lost, it shall be tempest tossed. Shall we shall Fain of Cawdor, too, the greatest is behind. 
Thanks for your paint. <laughs> Do not wish your children shall be king, when those that gave fame of caught over to me promise no less to them. That trusted home might yet enkindle you unto the crown, besides the thing of Cotter. But tis strange, and oftentimes to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truth, win us in honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. Cousin, a word I pray. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. Thanks, gentlemen. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am fain of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion, whose horrid image doth unfix my hair, and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings, my thought, whose murder is yet but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. Look how a part is wrapped. Chance may have me king, why, chance may crown me without my stir. New honors come upon him, like our strange garments, leave not to their mold, but with the aid of youth. Come what come may, time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Give me your favor, my dull brain is rough with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let us toward the king. Think upon what hath chanced, and at more time, the interim having waited, let us speak our free hearts to each other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friend. did report that, very frankly, he confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. He died as one who had been studying his death, as to throw away the dearest thing he owed, as to our careless trial. There is no art to find the mind to touch in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. What? Oh, worthiest cousin! The sin of my ingratitude even now weighs heavy on me. Would thou hast less deserved that the, propor that the proportion of both thanks and payment might have been mine? All I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all could pay. The service and the loyalty we owe, and doing it pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties. Our duties are to your throne, state, children, and servants, which do but what they should by doing everything safe towards your love and honor. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee and will labor to make thee full of Rome. Noble Banquo, that has no less deserved, nor must be known, no less to have done so. Let me unfold thee and hold thee to my heart. There, if I grow, the harvest is your own. My plenteous joys, wanton and fullness, seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose place are the nearest, know that we shall establish our state upon our eldest, Malcolm who will be named hereafter the Prince of Cumberland. Whose honor must not unaccompanied invest in him only, but signs of nobleness, like stars, shall shine on all deservers. From hence to Ibanez, and bind us further to you. The rest is labor, which is not used for you. I'll make myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife as your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy father. The Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down or elsewhere leap, for in my way it lies. Stars hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. True with the banquet. He is so valiant in his combination on fed, it is a banquet. Let's ask him whose care is not afforded it as well. It is a peerless kinsman. Day of success, and 
I've learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came missus from the king who all hailed me Thane of Hodor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with hail. King that shall be. This how I thought. Good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness has promised thee. Lay it to thy heart and farewell. Gloms thou art, and Codhor, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet I do fear thy nature, is too full of the milk of human kindness to the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, or not without ambition, but without the illness should attend to it. But thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou wouldst have great gloms, that which cries, Thus thou must do if thou have it, and that which rather thou must fear to do than wishest should be undone. I be hither. That I may pour my spirits in thine ear and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have the crown withal. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. <laughs> I've been mad to say it. Is that thy master with him? Who weren't so would have been for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our thane is coming. One of my fellows had the speed of him, who, almost dead for breath, had scarcely more than would make up his message. Give him tending! He brings great news! <laughs> Raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, the spirits that tend on mortal thoughts. And sex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the axis and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, who are ever in your sight. Substances you wait on nature's mischief. <clears throat> Come, thick night, and Paul be in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor have you peep through the blanket of the dark to find all those. <laughs> Great long, worthy Cardor, greater than both by the all hand. Transporting me beyond this ignorant presence, and I feel the future now and it's <laughs> My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Whenever shall some not morrow see. Your face, my thing is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time and look like the time. Though welcoming your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch. <coughs> it shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and master them. We will speak further. <laughs> Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. This castle of the pleasant sea, we are in Italy and sweetly recommend itself on our gentle senses. This guest of summer, the temple haunting Marlet does approve by his loved mansion. The heaven's breath smells wooingly. No juddy, freeze buttress, nor coin of vantage 
but this bird hath made his pendant bed in broken cradle. Where they most read in haunt, I have observed the air to doubt. See, see our own hostess. The love that follows us sometimes is our trouble, which we still think is love. Here I teach you how you should have got ill fear pains and thank us for your trouble. All our service, and every point twice done and then done double, were poor and single business to contend against those honors wherewith your majesty loads our house. For those of old and the late dignities, we rest your hermits. Where the bin of God, we course him at the shield and have purpose to be his purveyor. But he rides well, and his great love, as sharp as his spur, hath pulled him to his home before us. Fair and noble hostess, you are your guest tonight. Your servants ever have theirs themselves, and what is theirs in come to make their audit at your highness's pleasure, still to return your own. Give me your hand, conduct me to my host. We love him highly, and to continue our great support him. By your leave, hostess. <laughs> It were done when it is done, and too well it were done quickly. The assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his surcease. Success! That but this blow might be the be all and the end all here. But here, on this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instructions which, being taught, return to plague the inventor. The Stephen-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First as I am his kinsman and his subject strong both against the deed, then as his host who should against his murderer shut the door and I bear the knife myself. And besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues would plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking all, and pity, like a naked newborn babe striding the blast, or <coughs> heaven's cherubim, horsed upon the sightless curves of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye, the tear shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which o'erleaps itself and falls upon the other. How now, look you! Yes, what's up? Why have you left the chamber? He has agreed. Look you not, he has? You will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now in their newest laws, not cast aside so soon. So drunk wherein you dress yourself, have been slept since. And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely. At this time, such I account by love. But thou art feared to be the same as thine own act and valor as thou art in desire. Wouldst thou have what thou seems the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting thy dear now, when when I would like the poor cat in the attic. Peace, peace, I dare to hold the fate of common man, and dare to more as none. <gasps> When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time nor place did then appear, and yet you would make both. They have made it themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. I have 
have given self and know how tender it is to love the babe that melts me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brain that had I so sworn as you have done to this. We should fail. We fail! <laughs> but screw your cover should the sticking place and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will I with wine and well sail so convinced that memory, the water of the brain, shall be a fume and the receipt of reason a limbeck only, when in their swinish sleep their drenched natures lies as in a death. What cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon the spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men and children only, for thy undaunted metal shall compose nothing but males. <laughs> Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive it other, as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death? I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time of fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. How goes the night, boy? The moon is down. I've knocked for the clock. And she goes down. I take this later, sir. Oh. Take my sword. There's a husbandry in heaven. Their candles are all out. Take me that, too. A heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. Give me my sword. Who's there? A friend. What, sir? Not yet at rest? The king's event. He hath been an unusual pleasure and sent forth great largesse to your offices. This diamond, he greets your wife withal by the name of most kind hostess, and shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, our will became the service to the fact, which else should free of wrath. All's well. I drank last night of the three weird sisters. To you they have showed some truth. I think not of them. But when we could entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words upon that business. We would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. Leave to my consent when tis, it will make honor for you. So I lose not in seeking to augment it, but still keep my bosom franchise and allegiance clear. I shall be comfortable. We'll repose the water. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Forbid my mistress, when my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell. Get me bed. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle towards my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not. Yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to cider? Art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat depressed brain? See thee still, in form as palpable as this, which now I draw. Thou marshals me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes have made the fools of other senses, or else with all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dungeon, gouts of blood, twas not so before. There's no such thing. It's the bloody business which informs us to mine eyes. Now, or the one 
half world, where nature seems dead. Wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings and withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel wolf, whose howls his watch thus with his stealthy pace. With Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his designs, moves like a ghost. I'm sure and firm said earth, you're not my steps. Which way they walk? For well, fear thy very stones prate of my whereabouts, and take the present horrors from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds too cold of breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Here is not Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. that tricked the fatal bellman which gives the strength to good night. He is about it. The doors are open and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I've drugged their possets. That death and nature do contend about them whether they live or die. Who's that? What hope? They have awakened, it is not done. Be tempted not, the deed confounds us. I laid their daggers ready, he could not miss him. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. My husband. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard scream and the cry did not you speak? When? Now. As I descended. Hark! Who lies in the second chamber? Down, no, O'Brien. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. As one did laugh in sleep, and one cried murder. If they did wake each other, I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. Well, there are two lodged together. As one said, God bless us, and amen the other. They had seen me with these hangman's hands. Listening to their fears, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing and a man stuck in my throat. Steeds must not be thought after in these ways, so it will make us mad. You thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. Innocent sleep. Sleep that knit up the raffled sleeve of care, the death of each day's life, so laborers bath, balm of hurt minds, chief nourisher in life's feast. What do you mean? Still it cried, sleep no more. Longs hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? My worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so drastically of things. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your head. Why have you brought these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them and spare the sleeping wounds of blood. Well, go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Come it again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose. I mean, the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If you do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms withal, for it must seem their guilt. Wherefore was that knocking? 
a list with me when every noise appalls me. What hands are here? They fleck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No, this my hand will rather the multitudinous seas incarnadine, making the green one red. But I shame to wear a heart so white. I know knocking in the south entry. Tie our way to our chamber. The water clears us of this deed. We is here this then. Your constancy hath left one attended. We're knocking. You get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. Know my deeds, for best not know myself. Wake Duncan with thy knocking. I wouldst thou couldst. Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were the porter of Hellgate, he should have old turning the key. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there in the name of Beelzebub? Here's a farmer who hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Come in time, have napkins and now about you. Here, you'll sweat for it. Knock, knock. Who's there in the other devil's name? Faith, here's an equivocate. Who could swear in both scales against either scale? Who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet who could not equivocate to heaven? Oh, come in, equivocator. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Faith, here's an English tailor. Come hither for stealing out of French hose. Come in, tailor. Here you may roast your goose. Knock, knock. Never at quiet. What are you? But this place is too cold for hell. I'll, I'll double quarter no further. I had thought to let in some of all the professions that go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Anon, anon! I pray you. Remember the porter. <laughs> Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cock. <laughs> Drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Mary, sir, nose painting, sleep, and, and urine. <laughs> Fletchery. Sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire it takes away the performance. <laughs> Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him, it mars him. It takes him on and it sets him off. It persuades him and disheartens him. It makes him stand to and not stand to. In conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep and giving him the lie, leaves him. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. <laughs> that he did, sir, in the very throat of meat. But I requited him for his lie, and I think, being too strong for him, though he, he took up my leg sometimes, yet I made a shift to cast him. Is thy master stirring? Our knocking has waked him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, folks. Is the king stirring, worthy fame? Yet. He didn't command me to call timely on him. I've almost slipped the hour. Take you to him. I know it is a joyful trouble for you, but yet tis one. Labor we delight in physics pain, says the door. I'll make so bold to call. Tis my limited service. 
Blows the king hence today? He does. <laughs> he did a point so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And as they say, lamentings heard in the air. Strange screams of death and prophesying with accents terrible of dire from dust and confused events, new hats to the woeful time. The obscure bird clamored the live long night. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. It was a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. The horror! 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 Thunder heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke out the Lord's anointed temple, and stolen hence the light of the building. What's it you say to life? You mean you his majesty? Approach the chamber, and destroy her sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See, and speak yourselves. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Banquo and Donovan! Malcolm! Shake off this downy sleep, death's counterfeit, and see death itself! Up, up, and see the great doom's image! Donovan! Banquo! Rises from your graves and walk like sprites to countenance his horror! Ring the bell! What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to violate the secrets of this house? Speak, speak! Oh, gentle lady, tis not for you what I can speak, for the repetition in a woman's ear would burn her as it fell. Oh, Banquo, Banquo, our royal master's murdered. Oh, alas! What, in our house? To the <laughs> role anywhere. Dear death, I pray thee contradict thyself and say it's not so. And I have died an hour before this chance. I have lived a blessed time, but from this instant there is nothing serious in mortality. Renown and grace is dead, the wine of life is drawn, and mere leaves left this vault to gradual. What is amiss? You are and do not know it. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. Oh. <laughs> By whom? Those of his chambers that seem to done it. Their hands and faces were embadged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Be wise, amazed, loyal, and neutral, tempered and furious in the moment. No man, the expedition of my violent love outrun the pause of reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood. His gash stabs looked like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There, the murderers steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain? The heart to love, and in that heart, courage to make his love known. Ah! Uh, uh. hands home. What's the lady? Why do we hold our tongues? Then most may claim this argument for ours. What's to be spoken here? Where our fates, hidden in auger hole, may rush and seize us. Let us away, for our tears are not yet brewed, nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Look to the lady. And when we have our naked frailties hid that suffer in exposure, let us meet again and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand, and thence against the undervolt pretense I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I, to all. We should put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. <laughs> <laughs> What will you do? Let us not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. All to England. 
to Ireland I. For our separated, our separated fortunes shall keep us both in the safer. Where we are now, there's daggers and men's smiles. And you're in blood. And you're bloody. This murderous chef that shot, not yet lighted. Our safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore, to horse. And let us not be dainty of leave taking, but shift away. There's warrant in that theft, which steals itself when there is no mercy left. volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange, but this sore night hath trifled former knowings. Ah, good father, thou seest the heavens as troubled with man's act threatened his bloody stage. By the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the traveling lamp. Is it night's predominance, or the day's shame, that darkness does the face of earth entomb when living light should kiss it? Tis unnatural, even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon, towering in her pride of place, was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing most strange and certain, beauteous and swift, the minions of their race, turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, contending against obedience, as they would make war with mankind. His said they ate each other. They did, to the amazement of mine eyes that looked upon it. Here comes the good McDuff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why, see you not? Is it known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas, the day. What good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm and Donalbane, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Gets nature still, thriftless ambition that would raven up thine own life's mean. Then, it is most likely the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He's already named, and gone to Schoon to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Culmkill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors, and guardian of their bones. Will you to Schoon? No, cousin. All to fight. Well, all for them. May you see things well done there. Adieu. Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, Father. God's venison go with you, and with those that would make good of bad and friends of foes. should not stand on thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. And if there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine, why by the verities on thee made good may they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in hope? But hush, no more.
Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap in our great feast and all things unbecoming. Tonight we'll hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to which my duties are with a most indissoluble tie forever knit. Why are you this afternoon? I'm at the book. Should have else desired your good advice, which hath been both grave and prosperous in this day's council, but will take tomorrow. Is it far you ride? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time, fix this and supper. It's good not my horse, the better I must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain. Fair not our feast, my lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, filling their hearers with strange inventions, not confessing to their fathers who parasite. But of this tomorrow, hie you to horse, adieu, till you return at night. Goes Fleance with you. I'm my good boy. Our time does fall upon us. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot, and so I do commend you to their backs. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night. To make society the sweeter welcome, we'll keep ourselves till supper time alone. Well then, God be with you. Sarah, a word with you. Tend those men our pleasure. They, they, they are, my lord, without the palace gate. Bring them before us. To be thus is nothing but to be safely thus. He has in bank will stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. As much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind, he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. It is none but he whose being I do fear. And under him my genius is rebuked, as it is said, Mark Anthony's was by Caesar. He chide the sisters. When first they put the name of king on me, and bade they speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him, father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown, and put a barren scepter in my gripe. That is to be wrenched with the unlineal hand, no son of mine seceding. It be so. For Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered. Put vessels in the rancors of my peace only for them. And mine eternal jewel, given to the con common enemy of man to make them kings. The seed of Banquo kings! Rather than so, come fate into the list, and champion me unto the utterance. Who's there? Now go to the door and stand until we call. Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please, Your Highness. Well, then you have considered of my speeches. Know that it was he in times past that held you so under fortune which you thought had been our innocent self. As I made good to you in our last conference. Passed in probation with you. So you know it was Banquo. You made it known to us. I did. And went further. Is now a point in the second meeting. Are you so gospel to pray for this good man whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? We are men, my leech. I, in the catalogue, ye go for men, as greyhounds, hounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, shuffs, water rugs, and demi wolves are cleft all by the name of dog. The valued file distinguishes the swift, the slow, the subtle, the housekeeper, the hunter, each one of them according to the gift which bounteous nature hath in him stowed, whereby he does receive particular addition from the bill which writes them all alike, and so of men. Now, 
You have a station in the file, not in the worst rank of manhood. I'll put that business in your bosom whose execution takes your enemy off and grapples you to the heart and love of us who wear our life but sickly in his life, who's in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. And I another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid of it. Both of you know Banquo is your enemy. True, my lord. So is he mine. And though I could, with bare face power, sweep him from my sight and bid my will about him, yet I must not, for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose love I must not drop, but wail his fall, who I myself struck down. Hence it is to your assistance that I do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Though our oh, spirit shine through. Within the hour of most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves, acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment on it, for it must be done tonight. In some place from the palace. Always thought that I require a clearness, and with him to leave no rubs nor botches in the work. Fleance, his son, that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to mine than is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart, and call upon you anon. We are resolved, my lord. Call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight that find heaven. Must find it out tonight. Yet. They are assailable. 
and be thou jocund. Ere the bat hath blown his cloistered flight, ere to black Hecate summons, the shard-born beetle with his drowsy hums hath rung night's yawning peal. It's to be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applauds the deed. Come, sealing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with our bloody and invisible hands cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse, while night's black agents to their praise do rouse. How marvelous at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So prithee go with me. Sit down at first and last the hearty welcome. Our self will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. For my heart speaks, they are welcome. See, they do encounter you with their heart's thanks. Both sides are even. Here I'll sit in the midst. Be large in mirth, we'll drink a measure of the table round. There's blood upon my face. Tis Banquo's then. It's better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. That I did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats, yet he's good that did the like for fleance. Thou didst it, thou art the non pareil Most royal, sir, fleance escaped. And comes my fit again. I had else been perfect. Whole as the marble, founded as the rock, as broad and general as the casing air, but now in cabin, cribbed, confined into saucy doubts and fears. The bank will save. I, my lord, safe in a ditch he binds with twenty trenchy cattle on his head, the least a death to nature. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled hath nature that in time will venom free. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. We'll hear ourselves again tomorrow. My royal lord, you do not 
give the cheer. The feast is sold that is not often vouched for. Tis making, tis given with welcome. To feed, we're best at home. From beds, the sauce to meet is ceremony. Meeting, we're bare without it. Sweet remembrance, sir. Now, good digestion, wait on appetite, and help on both. May it please your highness, sit. Yet had we now our country's honor roofed with a graced person of our Banquo present, who may I rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please your highness to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here's the place reserved, sir. <clears throat> Where? Here, my good lord. What which, is it that moves your highness? Which one of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou canst not say I did never shake thy glory lords at me! Blame upon his promise. Please, your highness, to grace us with your royal company. Table's full. Here is the place reserved, sir. <laughs> Where? Here, my good lord. Which one of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy glory lords at me. Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Sit, worthy friend. My lord is often thus and hath been from his youth. Pray him keep seat. But for this moment, Harry, upon a thought he will again be well. Feed, and the guard not. Are you? I am the bold one. The dead looks on that which might uphold the devil. Oh, proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn on dad, which he said led you to Duncan. Oh, these flaws and starts impostors to true fear would wall become a woman's story at a winter fire authorized by her granddam. Shame in itself. Why do you make such faces? When all is done, you look but on a stool. Bring thee, see there, look, behold. How save you? Why? What care I? Thou canst not speak to. Charnel houses and our graves must send those that we Bury back up. Monuments shall be the maws of kites. What, quite unmanned and falling? If I stand here, I saw them. Oh, fight for shame. Blood hath been shed ere now in the olden time. Ere human statue purged the gentle wheel, I and since two murders have been for performed too terrible for the ear. Times have been that when the brains were out, the man would die and there an end. But now they rise again with twenty mortal ma murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, <laughs> your noble friends do lack you. <laughs> <laughs> I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friend. I have a strange infirmity which Nothing to those that know me. Ha! Huh. Love and health to all, and I'll sit down. Give me some wine. Fill full. I'll drink to the general joy of the table. To our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss, would he were here. To him and all we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and the pledge. Avaunt and quit my sight, let the earth hide thee! Thou bones are merriless, thy blood is cold, thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Think of this good peers, but as a thing of custom, tis no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare, I dare. Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, the hurricane tiger, take any form but that, and my firm nerve shall never shake. Be alive again. And tear me to the desert with thy sword. Trembling I inhabit that protest me the baby of a girl. Hang horrible shadow and real mockery hands. Why so? Being gone, I am a man again. <clears throat> Pray you sit still. You have displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. <laughs> <laughs> Such things be. Overcome us like a summer's cloud without a special wonder. You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe. But now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my I pray you speak not! 
pose worse, worse question than Richard. <laughs> <laughs> and what's a good name? Oh, stand not upon the order of your going, but God at once! Then I should never help attend his majesty a kind of night to call. augurs in understood relations have through magpies and shuffs and rooks, but forth the secretest man of blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which? How is it that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it by the way that I will send. There's not a one of them that in his house I keep a servant fee. I will tomorrow, and the times I will to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know, for the worst means the worst. For mine own good, all causes shall give way. I am in blood, stepped in so far, that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as going o'er. Strange things I have in head that will to hand, which must be acted ere they may be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Come, you will to sleep. My strange abuse is the initiate fear that needs our use. Yet, but young indeed.
her speeches have but hate your thoughts, which can interpret further. Only I say things happen strangely bored. The gracious Duncan was pitied in Macbeth. Mary, he was dead, and the right bound bank will walk too late. Whom you may say to please you, fleance killed for fleance fled. Men must not walk too late. Who cannot want the thought how monstrous it was for Malcolm and Donald to kill their gracious father? Damn fact, how did he grieve Macbeth? Did he not straight in highest rage the two delinquents tear? that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep? Was not that nobly done? I and wisely too, for twould have angered any heart alive to hear the men deny it. So that I say he has worn all things well, and I do think that had he done him sons under his key, as in please heaven he shall not, they should find what twere to kill a father. So should flee it. But peace, for from broad words and because he failed his presence the tyrant's feast, I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan, from whom this tyrant holds the due of birth, lives in the English court. Thither Macduff is gone to pray the holy king upon his aid to wake Northumberland in warlike seaward, that, by the help of these, with him above, to ratify the work. We may again give to our tables meat, sleep to our nights, free from our feasts and banquets bloody knives, do faithful homage and receive free honors, all which we pine for now. And this report has so exasperated the king that he prepares for some attempt of war. Sent he to Macduff? He did, and with an absolute sir not I, the cloudy messenger turns me his back and hums, as who should say, you'll rue the time I pause him with this answer. And that will might advise him to a caution to hold what distance his wisdom can provide. Some holy angel fly to the court of England and unfold his message ere he come. But a swift blessing may soon return to this, our suffering country under a hand accursed. I'll send my prayers with him. Sicken, 
answer me to what I ask you. Speak to me! Well, answer! Say if thou'st rather hear it from our mouth or from my masters. Call them. Let me see them. Pour in sow's blood that hath eaten her nine pharaoh a grease that sweating from the murderer's gibbet throw into the flame. Come high or low, thyself in office, deathly show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. <laughs> Macbeth, 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 beware, Macduff, beware the pain of fight. <laughs> Dismiss me in hell. Whatever thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. I was hard for my fear of right. But one word more. Hang on, Lord, for your man. Here's another, more potent than the first. <gasps> Thy three years I hear thee. Be bloody bold and resolute. Left to scorn the power of men. For none of woman born shall harm me bad. Live Macduff, what need I fear of thee? Yes, I'll make assurance double sure and take a bond with fate. Thou shalt not live. Ere we will eat our meals in fear and tell thunder it lies. Listen, let's be good to it. Oh, be lying, madam. Oh, take no care. Who chase, who fret, or where conspirers are. Macbeth shall never vanquish be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. That will never be. Who can impress the forest? Bid the tree and fix his earthbound food. Sweet Bodeman's good. Rebellion's head rise never till the tree of Burnham rise. Now high placed Macbeth shall live the lease of nature. Pay time and breath to mortal custom. Yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if thou art can tell so much, will Banquo's as you ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. Let me know. Show, show, show. Show his eyes and read his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo down. Thou crown the sear mine eyeballs. Thy hair, thou other gold on brow is like the first. A third is like the former filthy eye! <laughs> Why do you show me this? A fourth. Start eyes. What? Will the line stretch out until the crack of doom? Another yet. A seven. I'll see no more. Yet an eighth appears, who bears a glass that shows me many more. And some I see that twofold bowls and treble scepters carry. Horrible sight! But now I see it is true, for the blood bolted Bengal smiles upon them and pointed them for his. What is it so? Where are they gone? Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar. Come in without there. What's your grace's will? Saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my I lord. That can be the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of horse. Who was it came by? 
Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word. Macduff has fled to England. Fled to England! Ay, my good lord. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon Fife and give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before the purpose cool. But no more sight! Where are these gentlemen? Come, show me where they are. What hath he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitor. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife? To leave his babes? To leave his mansions and his titles in a place from whence himself to fly? He loves us not. He wants the natural touch. <coughs> For the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love, as well as the wisdom where the light so runs against all reason. My dearest cousin, I pray you, school yourself. But for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further, but cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. When we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear, but float on a wild and violent sea, each way and none. Take my leave of you. Shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease, or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cuz, blessings upon you. Father he is, and yet he's fatherless. I would be so much the fool should I stay longer. It would be my disgrace and your discomfort. Take my leave at once. Sarah, your father's dead. And what will you do now? How will you live? As birds do, mother. What, the worms and the flies? With what I get, I mean, and so do they. Poor bird! Thou wouldst never fear the net nor the line, the pitfall nor the gin. Why should I, mother? Poor birds, they are not such. My father is not dead, for all you're saying. Yes, he is dead. And how will that do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. And you'll buy him to sell again. Thou speakest in all thy wits, <coughs> and yet in faith, with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Why, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Everyone that does so is a traitor, and must be hanged. And must all be hanged that swear and lie? And everyone. Who must hang them? Part of the honest men. Then the liars and swearers are fools. For there are liars and swearers and now to beat the honest men and hang up them. Now God help thee, poor monkey. But how wilt thou do for a father? If he were dead, you'd be for him. If he were not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. Poor crackler, how thou talkest. Bless you, fair day. I'm not to be known, though in your state of honor I am perfect. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. We'll take a homely man's advice. Be not to hound your hands with your little ones. To front you thus, methinks I am too savage. To do worse with foul cruelty, which is too nigh a person. Heaven to preserve me, I dare abide no longer. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm. But I remember now I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often lawful. To do good sometime accounts of dangerous folly. Why then, alas, do I put up the womanly defense to say I have done no harm? What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou mayest find him. He is a traitor. Thou liest, thou shed, you villain! What, you egg? <coughs> Young cry of treachery. He has killed me, mother. Run away, I pray you. Murder! Murder! Murder!
seek out some desolate shade, and there reap our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men, stride our downfall and birthdom. Each new morn, new wills howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face with resounds that fell in Scotland, and cried out in syllable of dollar. What I believe, all well. What no believe, and what I can redress, as I shall find the time to, friend, I will. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought of us. You have loved him well, yet not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me. And wisdom, to offer up a poor, weak, innocent lamb, for he is an angry god. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge. I have lost my hopes. Perchance even there where I did find my doubts. Blame that Ronis left you wife and child. Those precious motives, those strong knots of love, without leave taking. Pray, that not my jealousies be your dishonors by mine own safeties. You may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Bleed, bleed, poor country, for great tyranny hath laid thou thy base ashore. And goodness dare not check thee where thou thy wrongs. The title is a beard. Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain thou thinkst, for the whole space in the tyrant's power and the riches to boot. Be not offended. Speak not as in the absolute fury. Make our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. And with all there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here, from gracious and good, have I offered a goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head, or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before, more supper and sundry ways than ever. By him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself I need, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted, that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor state to steam him as a lamb, compared with my confining smarts. Not in the legions of horrid hell could come a devil more damned than evils to top Macbeth. I grant him bloody. Luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name. But there's no fault, none, in my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your maids cannot fill up the cistern of my lust. Better Beth than such an one to reign. Boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. It hath been the untimely emptying of many the happy throne and the fall of many kings. But fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. You may convey your pleasures in spacious plenty, and yet seem cold. The time you may so hoodwink. We have willing dames enough. With this, there grows in my most ill-composed affection such a staunchless avarice that, were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their lands. Desire his jewels in this other's house, and my more having would be as a sauce to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper and grows in more pernicious roots than a summer seeming lust, and it hath been the sword of our slain kings. But fear not, Scotland hath poisons to fill up your will. Of your Miro, these are portable. With other graces, Wade. But I have none. The king becoming graces, it's justice, fairy, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, devotion, lowliness, mercy, patience, fortitude. I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each several crime, acting its many ways. Nay, had I power, I would pour the sweet milk of Concord into hell, uproar the universal peace, confound all unity on earth. O oh, Scotland, Scotland. If such an one be fit to govern, speak, I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No, not to live! O oh, nation miserable, when shall thy see thy wholesome days again, when the truest issue of thy throne by his own interdiction stands accursed, and does blaspheme his own breed? Your royal father was a most sainted king, the queen that bore thee, 
more off upon her feet than on her knees, died every day she lived. These evils that are peace upon thyself have banished me from Scotland. By my breast, my hope ends here. Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains hath sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from over credulous haste. But God above, Deal between me and me. For even now I put myself to thy direction, and unspeak my own detraction. Here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself, or strangers to my nature. I'm yet unknown to women, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own, at no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight in no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself, what I am truly is thine and my poor countries to command. Whither indeed, before thine here approach, good seamen, with ten thousand warlike men, were already setting forth at a point. Now look together, and then chance of goodness be like a warranted quarrel. <clears throat> Why are you silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once. <laughs> Tis hard to reconcile. See who comes here. My countryman, and yet I know him not. My ever gentle cousin, welcome hither. I know him now. Good God, the time to move the means that makes us strangers. Sir, amen. Stand Scotland where it did? Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. Where nothing but who knows nothing is once seen to smile. Where sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are made, not marked. Where violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy. The dead man's knell was there scarce fast for who? What's the new street? That of an hour's age doth kiss the speaker. Each minute tames a new one. How does my wife? Why, well. And all my children? Well, too. The tyrant has not battered at their peace. We were well at peace when I did leave them. Be not a niggard of thy speech, how goes? When I came hither to transport the tidings, which I have heavily borne, I ran a rumor of many worthy fellows who were out, which to my belief was witnessed the rather, for that I saw the tyrant's power afoot. Your arm, Scotland, would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distresses. Be it their comfort, we are coming hither. Gracious England hath lent us good seaward, and ten thousand men. Would I could answer this comfort with the like. But I have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not match them. What concern are they? The general cause? Or is it a fee grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest, but in it share somewhat, though the main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. Oh. I guess it. Your castle is surprised, your wife and babe savagely slaughtered. To relate like the manner were on the quarry of these murdered deer to have the death of you. Merciful heaven. And my children too? Wife and children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be convinced. My wife killed too? I have said. Be comforted. Let us make medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. <laughs> all my pretty ones? Did you say all? Oh, how kite all? All my pretty chickens and their dam in one fell swoop? Dispute it like a man. I shall do so, but I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things that were most precious to me. Did the heavens look on and not take their part? Sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger, blood not the heart, enrage it. Oh, I could play the woman with my eyes and the bragger with my tongue, but gentle heavens, cut short all intermission. 
bring front to front the fiend of Scotland and I. Within my sword's length set him, and if he escape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes men. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready, our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is right for shaking. The powers above put on their instruments. Now receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. Walked with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since His Majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise to her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed. Yet all this while in the most fast sleep. A great perturbation in nature to receive at once the benefit of sleep and do the effects of watching. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, what at any time have you heard her say? That, sir, which I will not report after her. You may to me, and this will speak, you should. Neither to you nor anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo, you, here she comes. This is her very guide, and upon my life, fast asleep. Observe her, stand close. How came she by that plate? Why, it stood by her. She is led by her continually. Tis her command. You see, her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. What is it just now? Look at how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed action with her, to seeing thus washing her hands. I have known her continue this a quarter of an hour. Yet here is the spot. Hark! She speaks. I will set down what comes from her to satisfy my remembrance the more strongly. Out. Damned spot out, I say! Why then, tis time to do it. I was a murky. Fire, my lord, fire. A soul, do you want fear? What need we fear? Who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? Do, do you mark that? The thing in the fight had a wife. Where is she now? What? All these hands never be clean. No more of that, my lord. No more of that. No more all with the stoning. Go to, go to. You have known what you should not. She spoke what she should not. I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. Is the smell of the blood still? All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. What a sigh is there. The heart is sorely charged. I wouldn't have such a heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. Pray God it be, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. <laughs> Yet I have known those who have died in their sleep who have died wholly in their beds. Wash your hands. Put it in I go. Look not so pale. I tell you that again, Ben was buried, he cannot come out on his grave. Even so. To bed. To bed, there's knocking at the gate. Come, 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 give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed. Will she get out to bed? Directly. 
foul whisperings are abroad, unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds with their death pillows will discharge their secrets. Nor need she the divine in a physician. God, God, forgive us all. Look after her. Remove from her the means of all annoyance and still keep eyes upon her. So, good night. My mind she has made it and amazed my sight. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, good doctor. Stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff weighs upon the heart. 
Therein the patient must minister to himself. Uh, throw physic to the dog or none of it! Say when! Come, put my armor on! Satan, send out! Come, sir, dispatch! Doctor, the thanes fly from me. Thou couldst, Doctor. Cast the water of my land. Find her disease and purge it to a sound and pristine health. I would applaud thee to the very echo thou should applaud again. Pull it off, I say! What rhubarb, sinner, a burgund of drug would cure these English hands? Hearest thou of them? I'm a good ward. Your royal preparation makes us hear something. Ugh. Bring it after me. I'll never be afraid of death in vain till Burnham Forest comes to Dunsany. Were I from Dunsinane, away and clear, prophet again should hardly draw me here. Cousins, I hope the days are near at hand that chambers shall be safe. We doubt of nothing. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. That every soldier hewing down a vow and bears before him. Thereby shall we shadow the number of our hosts and keep discovery air and report of us. It shall be done. We learn no other but the confident tyrant keeps still in Dunsany, and we'll endure our setting down before him. This is main hope, where there is advantage to be given, both more and less have given him the revolt, and none serve with him but with constrained things, whose hearts are absent too. Let our just censures attend the true event, and put we on industrious soldiership. The time approaches that will with due decision make us know what we shall say we have and what we owe. Thoughts speculative, their unsure hopes relate, but certain issues, strokes, must arbitrate. Towards which, advance the war! Out of our banners on the outer wall, the cry is still. They come! Our castle strength will laugh a siege to scorn. Here let them lie till famine in the aid you eat them up! Were they not forced with those that should be ours, we might have let them dare for beard to beard and beat them backward home. <laughs> what is that noise? It is the cry of women, my good lord. I have almost forgot the taste of fears. The time has been my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek, and my fellow pair had a dismal tritus rouse and stir as life were in it. I have sucked full with horrors. Wherefore was that noise? The queen, my lord, is dead. Should have died hereafter. It would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. It reaps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out. Out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon a stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Comes to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. <laughs> Gracious my lord. 
I should report that which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. Well, say, sir. As I stood by watch upon the hill, I looked towards Burnham, and anon, methought the wood began to move. Liar and slave! Let me endure your wrath and be not so. Within this three mile bay you see it coming. I see a moving grow. Thou speakest false. Upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive to famine cling thee. Thou speech be sooth, I care not if thou dost for me as much. I pull in resolution and begin to doubt that fiend that lies like truth. Fear not with that. Till Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. And now a wood comes to a Dunsinane. On, on, and out! That which he avouches does appear. There is no tarrying hence. No flying here. Begin to be aware of the sun. And wish the state of the world were now undone. Arm, arm, and out! Ring the alarm bell. Low wind, come rap. At least we'll die with harness on our back. Now, near enough, your leafy screens go down and show like those you are. You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right and noble son, lead our first battle. We're going to duck and we shall take it upon us what else remains to do, according to our order. Fare you well. Do we but find the tyrant's power tonight? Let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Make all our trumpets speak. Give, give it all breath. Those glamorous harbingers of blood and death. But in bare light I must fight the corpse. What's he that was not a woman born? Such a man might fear for none. What is thy name? Thou to be afraid to hear it. No. Though thou callest thyself by a harder name than any, it's in hell. Your name is Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a name more hateful to my ear. No, nor more fearful. Thou liest, a poor tyrant. With my sword I shall prove the lies thou speakest. Why 
Why should I play the Roman fool and die on my own sword? Whiles I see lions, the gashes do better upon them. Turn, Hellhound, turn! Of all men else, I have avoided these. But get thee back! My soul is too much charged with the blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. Thou bloodier villain that turns can give thee out! Ugh! Thou losest labor. As easy mayest thou the entrenchant air and presses make me bleed. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests. I bear a charmed life! Which must not yield to one of woman born. Then despair thy charm, and let the angels whom thou hast served tell thee. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Cursed be thy tongue that tells me so. Calm, my better part of man. Be these juggling fiends. No more believe that Balder with us in a double sense. Keep the word of promise in our ears and lose it to our hopes. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward. And live to be the sight and gaze of the time. We'll have thee, as our rarer monsters are, painted on a pole, and under writ, here you may see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet. To be baited with the rabble's curse. O Burnham Wood, you come to Dunson Aim, thou opposed, being of no woman born. And I will try the last. Lay on, Macduff. And damned be he, first cries, hold none.
You shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which will be planted newly with the time, as to call home our exiled friends of Laura, that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who as his thought by self and violent hands took off her life. What needful else that calls upon us, by grace of grace, which will be performed in measure, time, and place. So thanks to you all, <laughs> and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned at school. <laughs>